Hello and welcome back to the long-awaited return of Bolo Versus. This is a pretty special episode, so let's start this gong show. So, like I said, this is a very special episode. We've finally gone and done it. We've gone across 1,000 subs. So you know what that means, right? That's right. This episode is brought to you by your boy, Ray. <laughs> All right, I just, I gotta leave, okay? No, we just started, come on, man. We listen, just, listen, gotta... there's a lot to see in this life. I'm not wasting it here. Just kidding. Like I'd prostitute myself to raid Shadow Legends. But would I ever whore myself out to Big Daddy War Thunder, the number one leaker of classified military secrets since Edward Snowden? Jokes on you, I'm into that shit! But I digress, you're not here to listen to me e-beg like this is OnlyFans. You're here for hot Xeno penetration with steel. And by gods will I deliver. If the thumbnail didn't give it away, I'm going to pit the clume from the 2017 Oat Studio short Raka against first generation Bolos Mark 1 to 3. This is going to be a spicy one, so grab your rollades and let's get on with it. So, let's start with looking at our big baddies. The Klum are a four-armed, digit-degrade, bipedal species that are less little green men and more reptilian. And let's face it, they look and behave as if they were written by a 14-year-old edgelord who spent way too much time in high school smoking salvia while enjoying H.R. Geiger paintings just a little too much if you ask me. But F me if they still aren't damned original and cool looking. But here comes the good news and the bad news. There's only one 20 minute video and a rather lackluster wiki page. So a tremendous portion of this is going to be wild speculation or the polite way of saying I'm going to make a whole lot of shit up. <laughs> Firstly, let's look at what we know and what we see in the media. We know they're taller, more durable than your average homo sapien. They breathe at least a partially methane atmosphere. They all possess a form of telepathy and telekinesis, but it's unknown whether this is a biological trait or a result of their technology. I'm inclined to believe the latter, and I'm going to explain why shortly. So, the telepathy allows them to hack or override the human limbic and nervous system to assume control of a human. It's got a few limitations. It's one for one, and it can be jammed by these sexy hats, seen modeled here by the always stunning Sigourney Weaver. It also appears to be line of sight and short range only. So I guess four limitations in total. The Klum are stated in the wiki to be drones, but they can behave and act independently. They're extremely intelligent, but comically cruel, as if their entire species motto is it's prime time for war crimes. Everything they have is produced from a mimetic, possibly nanotech material called SWAX. This material can make everything from surgical equipment to their megastructures and atmospheric processors. It also seems to allow for local manipulation of gravity, which they also weaponize. Other weapons seen are plasma type bolts and energy pulses which cause biological material to disassociate violently. Now I briefly mentioned the comic levels of cruelty. Let's explore that briefly. They came here to exterminate us after their gods turned their back on them and supposedly began to pay attention to us instead. Go monkeys. So as a technologically advanced emotionally mature species, instead of self reflection and self improvement, they turned into a pack of genocidal toddlers who probably read an entire library of war crimes as how-to manuals and decided to go to work. They wiped us out in the billions, covered our monuments in dead and dying people just because. Yep, that right there is the Eiffel Tower. That ain't rust. That's the entire French army nine minutes after the aliens showed up. They burned people at the stake and uh, generally engaged activities that would get them cancelled by a Twitter mob faster than, well, you know who. Daddy, chill. But they are killable, and their tech can take damage from our kinetic weapons. So IEDs and bullets and missiles work, just not as effectively as normal. Now, their ships and vehicles aren't named or shown a great deal, but like everything else these Alex Jones wet dreams make, they're asymmetric AF. And I'm going to name and describe them. First is this large circular ship that collapses buildings. For the sake of argument, I'm going to call it the Swainus. Real original, right? Let me explain why. This ship appears to use gravity to collapse indigenous structures, so it really doesn't appear to do F all but shit bricks and buildings and leave a mess everywhere it goes. So, Swainus. <laughs> Next thing we see is these attack transport or flyer efforts. 
I'm trying really hard to find a joke in this one, but I can't, so sue me. The flowers it is, they're pretty basic as far as your sci-fi flyer goes. Directed pulse energy weapons, standard anti-gravity systems, nothing too spectacular or fancy. Lastly, is this bulbous ground vehicle. We don't see much of it or for very long before discount Lemmy Killmeister here gives the old Kandahar Express elevator to hell. Other than that, it really doesn't do much on screen, so I'm going to assume it's either a transport or a crew level fire support platform. Given its shape and delightful splatter pattern, I'm going to dub it the Swasticle. Because fuck them, that's why. <laughs> oh, shit. I'm never going to get monetized. <laughs> Okay, so for the sake of argument though, for Bolo forces on Earth, I'm going to use the same figures and deployment patterns as I did during the Bolos vs. Grey episode. So if you're really curious about the breakdown of pre-collapse Earth, feel free to check out the link above. But I really don't feel it's going to make too much of a difference. Before you start running to the comment section to tell me I'm wrong or tell me I'm cheaping out, hear me out, you've made it this far anyway. Alright? Given that we don't see the Klum use any orbital support in the media or mention in the wiki, I'm going to assume that these megastructures they've got on Earth are the repurposed ships. They've landed an entire invasion force with no follow-on forces. So given their extremely arrogant nature, I, don't, I really don't see them seeing us as a threat. If that's the case, the Mark IIs and III's working in concert are almost certainly going to be able to cause considerable damage to any force attempting low atmospheric landing of ships while providing an extremely maneuverable air defense from the Mark III's, while the Mark II's better elevation and main battery turret are going to turn any unshielded ground or low altitude target into Swiss cheese, which we see 50 cals doing with relative ease in the media. Plus, the advanced electronic warfare suites in the Mark III's are more than likely going to quickly isolate and jam the psychic hack the Klum employ, possibly being able to override the control matrix for the SWACs given enough time. All of this rolls up to a one-sided spanking so hard, even the staunchest tanky is going to say that's a little excessive. Stop it. Get some help. So, unless these Scientology rejects decide to sit in high orbit, tossing rocks at us like the naughty toddlers I profess them to be, they got a better chance of public presenting evidence that would lead to conviction. FBI, open up! <laughs> anyway, guys and gals, that's as they say the way she goes. So I hope you enjoyed the Return of the Bolo Versus series. There's going to be more coming soon. And if you like this kind of stuff and want to see more of it in the future, suggest something in the comments down below. And with that, guys, I will see you on the next battlefield. I've degraded to tossing socks at my cat. Leonard, say hi to the camera. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi, Leonard.